So like we said before, we're from Harlan County High School. My name is Caleb Ashley and I'm a junior. My name is Brenna Early and I'm a sophomore. Uh, and I'm Gary Henson, I'm a senior. And our project is called the Char Project. Uh, we got the opportunity to apply for a community challenge grant through KVEC. So we decided the Char Project, which is for Community Homes for Homelessness and Addiction Recovery. Earlier we talked about the uh, side of the project that involves our students at our school. Uh, this side of the project not only involves our students, but also drug rehabilitation graduates. Um, first of all, we'd like to thank our community partners. Christ Hands and Harlan has been great working with us. The Appalachian Challenge Academy, the Harlan County Physical Court. Uh, special thanks to KVEC for making it possible for us to apply for this grant, because without this grant, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we've been doing. And the Harlan County High School Frisk Center. I'm going to let Gary talk about the uh, benefits for the rehab graduates. Um, so in our county, we have two drug rehabilitation centers, and they said that their main problem was that they would graduate the people that are in need of help and that they would send them back out, and they're going right back out to either a homeless environment or a, the same environment that they were in that caused them to be addicted to drugs. And so our goal is to provide transitional housing so that once these graduates of the rehab centers are graduated, they have the ability to come and stay in these houses just for a limited amount of time to, you know, kind of get them back on their feet and get them ready for the real world experiences again. And um, we, f we feel like we can be a national model for this, uh, you know, worldwide problem because drug addiction is not only in southeastern Kentucky, it's a, it's a worldwide, uh, I guess you'd call it epidemic. And we feel like that we have a solution and that it can work and we just hope to, you know, help people in need. That's our main goal. Uh, so since the last fire summit, we've been working on getting our equipment and getting, like, being able to spread the word of the opioid epidemic and the youth homelessness epidemic. Uh, our website's live. I'll let Brenna talk a little bit about that in a second. It's www.char.org. Uh, we've done multiple interviews with Apple Shop, PBS NewsHour, Architecture Digest, and some other organizations that wanted to be able, we would we were able to give out, like, our information that just to be able to tell others about this problem. Uh, we have a fourth tiny home under construction right now that will help benefit to add the number to this community. And I'm going to let Brenda talk a little bit about the website. So as Caleb said, I am the website designer. I built the entire website. And it since coming onto this project, it's really opened my eyes to what kind of a problem we have in eastern Kentucky and in Harlan County and all around us and completely throughout the world. And I've learned a whole lot about the project. I've learned about how every like laws go into it all the yeah job placements and how all of it works together and it's really been an eye-opening project and I'm really glad that they took me on to help with building the websites and helping with all the stuff so recently we got to go to Frankfurt and uh, pitch our project to people in the capital we talked to the state treasurer and our local representatives, and they were all uh, thought that it was a great idea and were willing to help, which is great. So we'd like to thank them also. Um, we've had we got articles posted in our local newspaper to spread the awareness of our project and the opioid and, and youth homelessness epidemic. Uh, through the grant, we've purchased a computer and developed a workstation that we can work from. We have our video camera over here and have all of its equipment. And we have editing software so we can put these videos like online for people to be able to see. And then our website's like officially live. And then we have banners to hang throughout our community to inform everyone else. And then I just have pictures of the stuff that we have bought. And while we're going through the pictures, like this project goes hand in hand because most of the time the youth homelessness cross, the crisis can 
be related to the drug addiction because of the parents falling to drug addiction and either being incarcerated or in a rehabilitation center, they, the children have nowhere to go, which leads to them having the homeless problem. So with this project, it would allow us to be able to give not only the children a place to stay, but the uh, graduates a place to stay so that they would have a less chance of relapsing and falling back into this prior lifestyle. Our website, like I said, is char.org. It has a lot more uh, information on it about our project. And then we have a YouTube channel with just a few videos kind of highlighting our project. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? There will be an application process put in place. Any other questions? Yeah. Can't express how proud I am of them and you know, the work that they've done. And what we've tried to do is to look at this, you know, from a standpoint of if you're the one that's facing addiction and you fought that battle and then you've gone through the steps to to reach a, a recovery period and you've graduated, you know, when the door closes behind you, what's next? You know, where do you go? And if you go back into that same environment, that's uh, where you're homeless or you're you're just littered with people that you've been around that are addicted. You know, the, the relapse is uh, going to be an issue. So this provides, like they said, a stable environment for them to be able to get on their feet and provide counseling services, job placement, things like that. And we've got a a high student uh, homeless population as well. <clears throat> and we've got some students that that live in cars. You know, and this provides them with a place to be able to stay, especially when it's cold. And until other you know arrangements can be made, do you want to talk about the the three that we have? Are they have they been placed yet? Or uh, yeah, we have three tiny homes already established. They're ready for placement. We're still working on the permitting phase with the Harlan County Physical Court to be able to place these, and then the permitting to be able to run the water and power lines to the area that they will be placed. So whenever the permits are available, we'll be able to place those. The fourth one, the exterior shell, is complete. Uh, they're working on the interior and the wiring now, so it should be available hopefully by the end of the school year or the beginning of the summer. And then once that one is completed, it will be sold and the money will be rolled right back into the creation of the fifth tiny home. So the project will be sustainable? Yeah. And uh, the goal is to have a 20 home uh, transitional housing community for those that are coming out of rehab and the students that we have that need those services. Thank you. And I just want to make this known that uh, one of our problems that we run into is if a student is not 18 years old and they're homeless, there's so many rules and regulations out there that we have to go by and abide by. And I just want to let everyone know that I think it's ridiculous because, I mean, if you need help and you need a home, then why should you not be able to, you know, obtain help and obtain a home and somewhere to sleep at night? And so that's one of our battles that we're trying to overcome and the liability, of, you know, in case, you know, a storm comes through and destroys these houses and if, you know, all a flood, a fire, those are all the red tapes we're having to work through and we're just really excited to get this thing uh, rolling and going. Thank you.